I got love for you, man. You know what, I'm what are we talking about? You know, I'm not here to start any trouble. I'm only going to say nice things about you from now on. I think you're handsome, and I think you're a wonderful host. I'm fat and I'm overweight. Just don't say anything silly. I was waiting for you to say that. I'm not laughing about it. You think this is funny? I take this serious. You know, I don't want y'all to take anything that out of context that I'm saying. He's very funny. He likes to joke around a lot. As a personality and as an entertainer, yes. This is going to be really quick. I'm not taking any questions. Go ahead and get comfortable. I'm going to talk for a little bit. You're listening to Cabbie Presents, the podcast. Welcome, 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 welcome. Welcome back to the Cabby Presents podcast. I'm your host, Cabby Richards. There are two long and loose conversations waiting for you over the next hour. See, on this podcast, I try my best to keep stats and analytics and advanced metrics and goal differential out of the equation. You can get that from a multitude of other podcasts at TSN, which is the home of hockey. Here, it's like you're in the kitchen. You're sitting at the table, the bowl of Captain Crunch or a green tea or a bag of all-dressed chips in front of you. I know it's a serious time commitment to listen to this, and if you scale your expectations down to zero, you won't be disappointed. Actually, scratch that. The stories you'll hear today, you'll hear for the first time because my guests have never revealed these nuggets before. Also, these guys have never appeared on the Cabby Presents podcast and rarely do long-form interviews. It's a good one. Let's start the conversation now, and my first guest is on the phone. If it's going to be uh, an interview, I'm going to conduct it. So I'll answer my own questions, ask myself the questions, then give y'all the answers. The last time I saw this man, we were in Toronto. The Calgary Flames were in town and he had a bunch of people waiting in the corridor waiting to speak with him because it was a game day and he's a greater Toronto area guy. In fact, he's from North York. So his time is limited when he makes the journey east and his commitments are heavy because he tries his best to see everyone. The dude's got friends, the dude's got family, and the dude's got kids he's got to sign hockey sticks for. A newly minted all-star, this man defines grit, tenacity, a blue-collar work ethic. He's the prototypical hockey player, and we will find out just how much denim he owns. I'm happy to be joined by Mark Giordano, the captain of the Calgary Flames. Welcome, sir. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. I... I felt bad about that that day. I, I sort of iced you there when you were trying to no, no, don't try to get me for an interview right at the last second. Yeah. But uh, I had uh, bust the catch. That was a problem. No problem. No, I I, I knew that. Like I got there late, and um, and I knew that someone told me that you had already left you. And so it's all good. There will be many more times for me to. I, in fact, I'm going to write a bit just for us because I know you're kind of a low key guy, but I feel like that we can open you up a little bit. <laughs> Oh, there's, you could try. I don't know, man. We'll see. <laughs> there, it's like there's uh, there's some there's some soft there's, there's a soft inside beneath that hard exterior. <laughs> well, we'll see. I saw I, I've watched a lot of your interviews, and I don't know if uh, I'm going to give you much material, but I'll try. Yeah, no, Mark, sure. you will. Listen, listen, you will. I'm I'm confident of that. Okay, so I'm going to start with the serious questions first. How much denim do you own, and do you own a <laughs> jean jacket? I do not own a jean jacket, but I own, I don't know, I'd say about 10 pairs of jeans. Where, for do, sure. where do you buy jeans? Because hockey players, they have, lo- they, they have trunks like, uh, like, like uh, running backs. Like you guys have, you know, like uh, I wouldn't go as far to say like Maurice Jones Drew, uh, yeah. but, uh, but you guys, got, you guys some, got some trunks. Well, I, I, you know what? I bought uh, a bunch of, uh, one time on the road, I bought a bunch of those true religion jeans because I, I thought that they fit the best. And then Mike Camilleri was all over me about it, and he said it's awful style. So he said, he said it, he told me that if you can see the logo, it's terrible. So I've wow. now I try to go a little bit more low key and and you know jeans that don't have logos on them. So I, I try and search, but I uh, I don't know. It's been tough. You're right. It's tough to find a good fit for sure. So wait, okay. So what what brand of jeans have you have you like uh, focused on, or what have you? I think what, is it J brand. I think J doesn't have. Anything on the pocket? I don't think paper denim also yeah, does not have. Yeah, those seven, those seven jeans are all right too. They don't have much of a logo or. I love sevens. Um, I can't remember. There's a brand that I just I just bought here in Calgary too that that fits well, but they don't have anything on them. So those are nice. But 
Yeah, Cammy gave me a tough time for years about the, <laughs> the true religion pockets and walking around, and uh, he told me I might as well be wearing a Von Dutch hat as well. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Because those jeans became so popular, like so quick, like everybody have them, had them, and like it, they kind of rose to prominence in sort of that um, Ed Hardy era. Like dudes are rocking Ed Hardy shirts and True Religion jeans, like everywhere. Well, I thought so. they were sweet, man. I thought like yeah, I thought they were cool and they fit nice, and I was all pumped. And then I got just shot down you. real quick by a bunch of the guys on the bus walking on the bus with them. <laughs> and those aren't cheap. Like you, you said, you're like ten pairs, and like if you those are at least two aren't two bills. So like you're dropping oh, like yeah, two a jeans on bucks at yeah. least. Hey, so um, uh, oh, one quick story. You said seven jeans. I'm I'm a huge fan. That's my favorite brand. I just rock I rock sevens, and I keep it classic with Levi's. I have a large bum, and I'm able to find like when I go to the U.S. I just murder Nordstrom Rack because <laughs> like I, I'm you know I'm just a blue collar dude, and and I'm going to find deals, and I always find like some gems in there. It's a bit of a time commitment for those that are listening that have been to Nordstrom Rack because it's like it's like winners on steroids. But anyway, <laughs> but a few years ago, I think I've told this story on. Um, on this podcast a few years ago I interviewed James Harden when he was still in college and he was at uh, Arizona State University after the inter oh, on the way into the to the building I saw this like sick like cream Range Rover so I said to him like yo James is that your range in the parking lot he's like no no it's my best friends he plays on the team I'm like that dude drives a Range Rover what are you guys like 19 he goes his dad um, started the line seven jeans and I was like oh my oh, wow. goodness I'm like, fe like, listen, I'm like, tell that dude. I said, thank you so much. Because for a time, seven jeans just cupped a woman's backside elegantly. Dude, it was like, it, I, I, like, I just, and this is going to sound weird. I just, no, nah, maybe I shouldn't say it, but no, nah, I'm going to say it because I'm fearless. <laughs> I just wanted to bite a bunch of bums. Like there was, it, 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 like, it just made the bum so like a peach, dude. I don't know if you had a similar reaction to women in seven jeans, but for a time I was like, these are the ultimate brand for women. So I had to thank, I've never met that guy, but I'm like, Harden, man, you got to pass along my thank you. That is yeah, my, man. that is my yeah, little that... side note about seven jeans. So that's it. So you got you, you have a hook. You must have a hookup now, don't you? No, I'm like I've only I've only seen James a, a few times, but not enough oh, to. Okay. I haven't had like dinner or hung out with the dude and and <laughs> chased some chicks with him. And like if if that was the case, then maybe I'd have a a bit of an in. But unfortunately, I don't. Uh, okay, here's my second thing. Uh, another serious question. A friend of mine before I came on uh, before you called in, he was like he, he wants to know how long would the burn last if the Toronto Maple Leafs and the Toronto Calgary, sorry, the, the Toronto Maple Leafs and the Calgary Flames swapped captains. If you were traded long, here, how, how long, long would the would burn, the burn last? last? Yeah. <laughs> oh man, I don't know. That would that would uh, that's a tough question. I mean, uh, uh, me and Dion, I lived with Dion for a uh, for a bunch of years, and Did you? Uh, we're good buddies. It'd be a, I think it'd be a tough one, man. It'd be tough for not only us but for everyone around too. Listen, he also he also added that he would buy all of your meals in Toronto for the for the duration of your of your the length of your contract or length length of your stay in the city. That's I, I know that you can't force a trade and that you wouldn't do that, but if that were to happen, just expect a bunch of free meals from my free my, meals. Yeah. <laughs> and uh I guess I'm I'm uh I uh my takeaway from that conversation with him is that he would prefer to have you in the blue and white than our, the current captain in the blue and white. Oh, man. Dion, Dion takes a lot of heat, and he's, he's, uh, I think he's a good player, and he's been a good player for a long time. And I think he just sometimes he's not as, uh, you know, warm to, to the media sometimes or warm to, you know, and he doesn't get that, that reputation of, uh, you know, being a warm guy with the media, so he he, he t takes some heat. Not gonna lie, I, I see sometimes how he takes some heat, but I think he's playing well and he's he's been a good player for them. But Mark, yeah, listen, man, I I, I, I understand I understand you have to say that stuff, and I didn't mean for you to jump into like uh, like autopilot <laughs> mode right there, and, and like I know that you guys can't say anything, and I'm I'm not trying to trying to get you to say anything you wouldn't normally say. So, however, this conversation. We're gonna, I'm gonna open you up a little bit. <laughs> so, uh, how okay? When you did play in Toronto, how many tickets did you have to buy? 
I don't have to buy many because, uh, you know, maybe my first time or second time there I did, but um, a lot of the uh, friends and family now take it upon themselves to look at the schedule in the summer and get their own tickets. So I get about, you know, I'd say I'm a, about 8 to 10 when I when I come in, but I put a lot of people on the list after the game and I'm, I go up in the stands and there's, a, you know, at least... 80, 60 wow. to 80 people all the time. <laughs> Dude, you have like two busloads of people that yeah. make that, that come in to, to see you. And then like you, you got to take a bunch of photos. You got to be like, hey, what's up? You you probably find yourself having like the same like two or three uh, question and answer exchanges with like all those people. Like, oh, oh good game, huh? And then you have to say whatever. And then like, oh, it's like it's <laughs> in a way it's cool because you see all your friends and family. But then. Like, you have to actually probably end up repeating yourself like 71 times. Oh, absolutely. And then, you know, the the I've never understood the photo thing with, like, cousins or family or anything like that. Like, I see these people all the time in the summer, and, and, and I tell them, like, I'll, get, I'll give you a photo any time in the summer. It's just <laughs> after the game. We're in a rush and trying to get to see my parents, trying to get to see my, you know, my aunts, my uncles, and... and the, the photo thing's the one that the time consuming one. Yeah, for sure. But I guess it's because yeah. because you're actually in the Air Canada Center and it's like it's yeah. just after a game. It's it's kind of the time and well, place it's, thing. It's the Twitter now and the Facebook. They want to you know. Oh, it, for sure, and Instagram on, too. Automatically put it on or or Instagram or put it up on Twitter or something. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Hey, since you uh, have been playing in Calgary for most of your professional career, are you now a steak guy? Yeah, for sure. I mean, is that is that your meal of choice? I love steak. I eat steak usually the night before game on the road. Um, Oh, for sure. You can't find it's tough to find a bad steak out here in Calgary. Have you? Do you change it up though? Are you just you basically like? Are you kind of a meat and potatoes guy, or do you venture out? Do you have your Thai food from time to time? Obviously, you know there's Italian and steak that pretty much goes hand in hand. Or do you even go like sushi? I go. you know, the night before a game, I'm usually a steak guy, meat and potatoes. But um, on any other night, I'll switch it up. I'll do sushi. I'll do Italian. I'll do um, Indian food I'm really into. Nice. Uh, lots of different foods, man. Like, I, I wasn't like that when I'm, I was younger. But now, yeah, I've tried pretty much everything. And, um, you know, here in Calgary, you can get, like, like some bison burgers or oh elk, yeah you know. yeah of course, you, of can course. Get, you can get different things so i, I try venison try and dip into a little bit of everything but yeah before the night before a game i'm pretty i'm either it's either a nice steak and potatoes or like a chicken parm with a big plate of pasta on the side <laughs> nice. dude that's like that was like my high school dream because you know when we were like younger we could eat anything and now Whew, man, I eat that. Just I, li- I literally gained three pounds after that. Kind of, like, dude, <laughs> the holidays were the worst for me because I'm already fat, and I probably gained about eight, nine pounds just out of two meals. It's just a disgusting pig. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Hey, one thing about Indian food. A few years ago, I, uh, I took a girl out, and we went to an Indian restaurant, and just yeah. out of the sort of the uniqueness of the place, it was like an aphrodisiac for the chick. It was, she was like, I was like, yeah, one of, there's a cool Indian spot like down the street from my place. She's like, really? And I got so much props for that dude. So you guys, the dude's listening. Indian, when you take, when you go outside the box a little bit, you get mad points. If you have any, yeah, good night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, Mark, <laughs> if you have any little nuggets that you want to add to to the to the male listeners or whomever, please just throw throw them out there. Yeah, no, the, you're right, man. Indian food's great. I, I don't know. I have, I've, I mean, I haven't had an experience like that. But Iggy, th- Iggy took us one time to his favorite spot here in Calgary, and he was the one who like introduced me to it. He's like, "Oh, have you ever tried Indian food?" I'm like, "A little bit, but not really." He's like, "Well, you got to come to this spot with me," and brought me there. And the, um, you know, the chef, uh, the chef. Uh, brought out like different plates and and all different appetizers it was unbelievable oh, and then nice. he brought out this spice at the end of it and he's like he brought it out in this like little homemade little jar thing and he's like i can't put this on the table and leave it with you guys because if you guys take too much you'll basically be in the hospital and he's oh, like I'll wow. just put a little bit on on your food just so you can taste how hot it is it was, it was actually really a really neat experience 
Nice. I gotta. I gotta get the name. What, what is the name? Do you remember the name of that spot? I gotta go there. I next don't. Time. I don't. It was. It's on like. I don't know. It's downtown Calgary on Fourth Street. If the guy ever listens to this, he's gonna be so pissed that I don't know the name. <laughs> I'll get. I'll get it to Pete, and he'll get it to you. Okay. Awesome. Uh, do you remember your first email address? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I. I take a lot of heat for that one too. Uh, <laughs> what is it? I never, I never changed. I never changed it. And, and wait, do you still use it? Like, are you kidding me? Like. I've changed it now, but it was Mark Giordano attack because of because uh, of our junior team going down attack. So it was Mark Giordano attack at Hotmail. <laughs> <laughs> Is it was it all one word or were there like were there lo- like uh, underscores all, like Mark all all, all, all one case all one word? <laughs> <laughs> How long did you have that email for? But oh, I just changed it recently, like a few years ago, and all the boys are all over me because <laughs> whenever a team email would go out, that would be on the list, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's that's tremendous, and it was, and of course, it's a hotmail address. Like, I don't know, there shouldn't be any adult with a hotmail address. Should be like, you should either you should get your email privileges taken away. <laughs> or um, something, you should lose your phone or something until you smarten up and get at least, at the very least, a Gmail account. That's my personal philosophy. Well, now I just, I use my PA account now, right? Oh, okay, so I yeah. Keep it, keep it professional. Right, of course, of course. <laughs> hey, um, I have a, a, a series of, you know, sports fans were, were, were divided into factions. And I want to see what side of the, the factions or what side of the ledger you fall on in these five categories. Are you a Manning guy or a Brady guy? Manning guy. Okay. Are you a LeBron guy or a Kobe guy? LeBron guy. Are you a Mike Trout guy or a Yasiel Puig guy? I'm a Mike Trout guy. Are you a Sid Crosby guy or a Alex Ovechkin guy? Sid Crosby. Are you a Leo Messi guy or a Cristiano Ronaldo guy? Leo Messi. Are you a Roger Federer guy or a uh, Rafael Nadal guy. Oh, Federer for sure. Guy, you said basically the first ones of all those. You're Manning. You said LeBron or Kobe. I said LeBron. So you're Manning, LeBron, Mike Trout, Crosby, Messi, Federer. Like you didn't even you didn't even take the second option. You just took the first <laughs> option for that whole list. All six of those guys. Oh man, those are those are easy for me. Those picks. Really? How are you? Yeah. How are you a Messi guy over a Ronaldo guy? Oh man, I think Messi's like I don't know. I just you know, on on the field, whatever. But I just like I like Messi. Uh, I, I mean, I don't know the guys, but I just like his. Uh, I don't know his. I guess his expressions and his the, the way he carries himself more than Ronaldo. Listen, your part of you is probably because it, like has it feels some sort of commonality with Messi because he doesn't really talk that much. He's not a like a, a me first kind of a, a guy in the public eyes. Very private. He does like very few interviews. He only does, he's got his Adidas. He does his Adidas commercials, the Turkish airline commercial he does, he does with Kobe. Is it Turkey? No, no. Is it Turkish airline? I think it's the Turkish airlines with, uh, with Kobe. And I think he's a Samsung guy, I think. Or maybe that's Ronaldo. They do those crazy like District 9 uh, Samsung commercials. So Messi's yeah. your dude over the two. Yeah, man. Messi's like, I don't know. He just carries himself so well. And the same with like, the Federer, like, I, don't get me wrong, I've, I've actually, I really like Nadal over the years. He's, he's been great, but Federer, how can you, how can you not like that guy? I listen, I, yeah, Federer is the greatest of all time to me, but Nadal owns him uh, in career, career head to head, and and obviously at the French Open, that's like, yeah, and, yeah, but there, there's what's the age gap there, right? Like, I think it's, I think Federer's thirty or no. Maybe twenty between twenty eight and thirty. I think Nadal is like twenty five. I probably have that wrong, and I should Google it. But I, yeah, I, I think that like five years at the most separates the two. Yeah, I think he 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 does have his number. He does. Uh, I agree with you. He does have his number, but I just like that guy's like the ultimate pro, man. Like carries him the way he carries himself, the way he he's durable. He's still winning now. Like I yeah, don't know. He's I, he, I, he's one of my favorite. Favorite athletes for sure. How are you a Manning guy over a Brady guy? I don't know. I I used to like Tom Brady a lot, and Until just over what? the past few years, it's just like changed. What? I just, How? I don't know. How? I, I don't know, man. I just he, he's he's good. He's a competitor and all that, but uh, there's just something over the last few years that I uh, 
I can't. I don't know. I can't. You don't do like it that. He, don't, you don't, you don't, don't like. You don't like that he blows up his teammates. Like you see him on the on the sideline, just freaking out on his teammates. Yeah, the yelling at the teammates, and I mean that's fine with that. You're competitive and you're you're into the game and all that, but he, maybe he goes a little overboard with it. Or is it? Or is it because he's like such a golden boy, such a pretty boy? You're like. Forget that guy. I'm going with Manning yeah. with his busted nose and his five his five head, his daddy yeah. belly, and his and his broken neck and knees. Yeah, man. Like, yeah, you, yeah, you might have a good point there. The, you know, dating a supermodel, the, the, the go with the guy, the you know the 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 guy who's been through a lot, neck surgery, you know, battling through it, still getting the job done. I don't know. I'm about Manning. I like Manning's funny. And he's funny, too. man. You see yes! those commercials and those dances he does, and yeah. that, that's funny to me. That's a I, huge respect to Manning. Like he, he's like, you know, it's it's uh, his Papa John's commercials aren't that great, but the Direct TV ones are pretty good. The last one wasn't that great with his brother that they were rapping, but normally he's got some good ones. And then like his the all time like on the Mount Rushmore of athlete sketches is his on Saturday Night Live. With the it was I don't know if it was the boys and girls club sketch where he's playing football in New York and hitting oh, the kids yeah. with the footballs. That's one of the greatest sketches like a uh, of all time. That's it was oh, unbelievable. Yeah. Hilarious. Hilarious. Spe- speaking of athletes that have a huge commercial appeal, uh, at what point did you decide, like Michael Jordan, just to shave your head? <laughs> uh, wow, that's going back now at least seven or eight years ago. I just yeah, you know, I had this thick sort of. It was like a, a almost like a, an SOS pad. <laughs> the way my hair grew and it was like wiry and stuff. So I, I just had enough, man, and I let it go. So you got to let it go at one point, you know. Either you let it go because you don't like the way your hair looks, or you let it go because you're balding, right? So wait, so you didn't like the way? Wait, is it? Where, did you? <laughs> was it because you didn't like the way your hair looked, or the the hairline was starting to creep back, like it? Like no, it, is for it wasn't. James. It wasn't at the time. I don't know about now. Now it might be, but <laughs> at the time it was the hair. So I, I guess we'll never know if I keep shaving it. Right. You'll never know right. what the hairline is, right? How um how big did it get? Like, did you have like a baby fro, like a Will Ferrell uh, fro? No, I didn't have, like, a fro like that. It was just, like, I tried to keep it short, and then I tried to, like, spike it for a bit. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All these different things, but, like, you know, it was just getting painful. It just, it would just, like, frizz up and, and then look awful at the end, so. <laughs> what do but you... I just, I, I have played with guys who've kept, like, they've held on for way too long, <laughs> so I don't want to be one of those guys, right? Who was one of those guys that kept holding <laughs> that held on? <laughs> I, I I can't. Uh, what do you mean? I can't Listen, mention names, but you know you see them when the guys who have the skull in and and when the <laughs> helmet falls off during a fight, they 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 grab their helmet real quick and put it back on before the penalty box. <laughs> oh, you know who got? Uh, I remember vividly 2010 Winter Olympics. The dude that was getting crushed by people was Getzlav because his his hair was like really it, like it went and uh and then like when he had you know when you're doing the national anthem you got to take your helmets helmet off and he was just getting murdered on social media because yeah like, but i think he's he's let it go now oh right? yeah like, yeah he shaves it he, sh- he has he's to. finally he's finally he's let accepted it, go, it. Right? yeah he's accepted it so wait <laughs> how how often do you shave your head and what do you do about razor bumps um you know what i i try and do it like once a week you know, every week I try and try and do it once a week, but I just, you know, you you steal your wife's moisturizing cream and rub it on your head, and you should be good. <laughs> that's a, that's the key. You got to have a wife, and she has to have good moisturizing cream. Yeah, exactly. Hey, uh, I, you know, I never go right down to the wood either. I never do it with like a straight razor because. So what do you use? Then you get the worst razor. I I just use um like a liner. Yeah, like a head shaver, like but I don't use any comb on it, so short it's really short but it's not like you're not going to get that razor that burn yeah 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 um when i had um i had dinner with a a friend of mine uh recently and he said that one of the um in the summer i believe when you when uh the league has um meetings with the competition committee one of the ideas was uh, was to have uh during the shootout have the players take their helmets oh yeah this was bettman's idea he wanted to have the players take their helmets off so that the cameras can see their faces because in your league, 
I mean, like I believe it's the top ten scorers generally of the of the guys wear visors, but they you know they wanted to show your faces more because in basketball obviously there are no helmets and everybody knows who the players are, and they wanted to promote the players a little bit. If this idea were to ever go forward, you are you are you with it or are you against it? Nah, man, leave the helmets on. Maybe a guy will toe pick or something into the boards and hurt himself. You think so? But that never it's happens, like, Mark. It's not like hockey players are known to be the best-looking guys either, so <laughs> just cover those, cover those faces up maybe a little bit. Really? I, I like the idea because, I mean, have you guys full HD and, you know, and, like, it's at that point it's, it's going to be some kind of sick move. And for the dudes... Unlike yourself, that are not follically challenged and have the flow, their hair just you know, you know, uh, swaying in the wind, and their curls are like you know moving oh in slow God. motion. Can you, you imagine know? you have guys going going to the bench and fixing their hair between the the end of the game? And oh, the you know they would. Oh, you know they each some guy be like, "Yo, hand me the Gatorade or the water bottle, <laughs> douse themselves no, exactly. with it, and then run their fingers through their hair so they got that slick look." For sure, dudes would do that. Oh, a hundred percent, like a, a thousand percent. Yeah. It would be more than half, I bet. <laughs> I wonder if in the future, this, I was thinking about this on, on the way into the studio. If in the future, in like, I don't know, five, seven years, there's a way to have like a revenue stream, the NHL partners with Google and the guys wearing visors, like the, the Google Glass visor will be in effect. And like, they charge people like 10 bucks a month and every game what, like there's one guy on a team who's going to wear the Google Glass and you'll hear everything it's unfiltered unedited 10 bucks a month and uh and like that Man, that, that would be you, like you, can you patent that idea would right i just i just gave that away for free i just gave that away for free as i was thinking i'll give i'll go in with you on that one but wait that's but, a good idea but mark could you play like knowing that everything you say in the game will be like some somebody in friggin uh, lexington kentucky or in uh chicago illinois will be listening to you and watching you as you play they're watching on their phone or whatever the next uh, ipad is in 2021 whatever the i screen or i clear whatever the hell that device is called they're watching and you, you know you're in the boards or you're in the corner and it's a scrum and you're just giving it to a dude yeah it'd be you know what at first i bet you guys would be aware of it but but Stuff would slip, and then the best part would be if guys on the other team didn't know that they were being mic'd or whatever, and yeah. they were. You know, oh yeah, their their and, audio picks up too. Yeah. Yeah, and then their, their audio picks up, and they hear what they're saying, and then they. I mean, if they're giving it to you pretty good, you can't hold back. You got to sort of go back at them. Yeah, because you're a man. Because you're a man, and you can't just have someone just like uh, you know, take shots at your at your honor as at, at your <laughs> your core as a dude. You got to throw yeah, some words exactly. back. Oh, one of the one of the all time, uh, I suppose, chirps was um, it was Philly was playing Pittsburgh, and one of the Philly guys, and I don't want to say I don't want to say any names, but was killing a dude on the penguins about his girlfriend because some dudes on the flyers had uh knew her in the in a biblical sense and was just murdering the dude and i was like i don't know how you don't lose your cool if someone's gonna take i mean obviously kids and probably wives are off are off uh out of bounds but a girlfriend i guess in this regard because they're rivals or whatever they were. Just, have you heard? Have, have you heard the the trash talk get get to there on the ice? Um, I can't say that I haven't. Yeah, it, there's been some. I've heard some offside chirps, but uh, usually the wives. You're right. The wives, the kids. They're they're offsides. But there's some there's some gray area when it comes to to girlfriends and stuff like that. So. Yeah, man, that's yeah, that's a tough one. And I don't like your girlfriend is like a, a direct uh, reflection of you. Like you you pick this girl, you you're into this girl, she's your girl, and then this this dude was just man. Like, well, the worst part about chirps nowadays is is so you chirp a guy, but with the salary cap and all the player movement that happens now is like there's a good chance you're going to play with guys at some point in your career. So that's the other you thing you got to take. In, you got to you got to factor in when you're chirping guys. You got to you got to know that there's a chance you might run into this guy at some point. Or or imagine like the I mean I don't know if there's not a ton of player movement, but that guy could end up on your team. 
Yeah, that's what I mean. Like you chirp a guy's wife or oh his, my his gosh. girlfriend, and then he's so on your awkward. team the next month. That'd be pretty awkward. Oh my <laughs> gosh, that'd be the worst. And then, like you immediately have to squash it like right away. Be like, listen, man. Yeah. In the heat you of the just moment, go up like, and say, "Hey, man," just like <laughs> I don't know. I don't even know how you squash, but you I go don't, up right yeah, away. Seriously, you gotta get I, it. Just get it over with. Yeah, Mark, that's not something that you forget. Like, if someone takes a shot at your girl, you're not going to forget that, ever. Oh, no. Yeah. no. You don't forget many chirps. I mean, you remember most of them, so. But, yeah, you know, uh, it's, you could sweep most stuff. You could sweep under the rug, but when it goes off size a bit. Yeah, then, yeah. Those are tough ones. Totally. Um, I have a, I'm going to get you out of here on this last little piece of uh, conversation. I was, um. Again, I was I was having dinner with a with a friend of mine, and he plays he plays in the league, and uh, we were talking about uh, teams. Like when a when a team is struggling, not I'm not saying you, I'm just saying like in general, when you look at the standings and certain teams are struggling, your first thought of, is, do you think that there's a problem in the room, or that the personnel is not that great? Like when you when you look at a team that like l- loses like six of eight or you know the month one particular month they got you know their two wins and w- whatever like what, yeah. what what's your what's your first thought it's uh, it's not the um i don't think I, I don't think that when when something like that happens i don't think automatically that there, there's a problem in the room i usually usually you just think that it's not they're not good enough as a team right like Either they don't have a good mix, they don't have like good chemistry with each other, or they're missing a big piece. But that's what I think. I don't. I don't usually go right to the uh, oh, there's a problem in the room thing. Got you. I was um, uh, before. Um, ooh, I don't know if I can say this, uh, or if I should <laughs> say this. Uh, when when okay, being in Toronto, and I'm, I'm not like a, a, a Toronto Maple Leafs guy, but. They had a stretch maybe a month ago or six weeks ago where they, you know, they were just getting killed. Like yeah. I think there was like an eight two game in there and then like a like a five nothing game or something like that. And I and I sent a, a couple text messages to some of the guys on the team. I was like, yo, you guys hate your coach. Like when you get when a team just gets pumped like that, like over a, a short period of time or even a, a longer period of time. I wonder how much that reflects the coach. Have you? Do you have that sort that similar thought? If you look at you know you got a team coming up and man these guys just been struggling for a while. Do you think there's a divide with the coach and the and the and the players or just the players like man we don't we don't really respect this dude anymore. We've, too, we've sort of I tuned think, out. I think it happens. It does happen. Yeah, man, for sure it happens. I think not that not that uh, I don't know about the respect thing, but. It's just uh, for whatever reason, sometimes, it, and it happens from time to time. Like the message just doesn't get through, no matter what. You know, the coach can be a good guy, he can whatever, and he, I think sometimes, I think that I think that you know that saying. Like the, there are certain coaches who do have a shelf life. Yes, I think I think it's true, man. I think there's some there's certain coaches that do, and then there's other coaches who can be who can coach for 10 years and, and, and be fine. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think, um, the best case, the best example of that is probably Mike Keenan. I don't, I don't know if he stayed on any team longer than three or four seasons. And I guess more recently, John Tortorella is probably one of those guys that like, he'll really get, he'll really give it to you. And then sometimes then, then, and the message is lost quicker than say like a Ken Hitchcock or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. I, I think sometimes I, like, Obviously, I haven't. You know, if you don't play for guys, you don't know. But uh, I think it's sometimes it's pretty obvious that like, you know, a team will do well for like, you know, the first or second or third year, and then all of a sudden it's like, you know, there's sort of a, you know, they hit a wall sort of thing. But yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. M- Mark, let's hope that you never hit a wall <laughs> because yeah, uh, yeah, because the way that you're playing uh, and the way that you've. Uh, that you're now on the map has been impressive, and that that all that's all a result of your hard work, and your like relentless self confidence. And even though you've been, uh, you know, the the first part of the of the journey wasn't the big bright lights like the storied, you know, first round draft pick. Like you are a man where you put like you put everything on your shoulders, and now you're carrying that team. So congrats to that man, and I hope that continues. 
Oh, thanks, man. Thanks. I appreciate that, Kevin. And listen, I will, I'm going to write a sketch for you and I. I I'm not sure. i got to come up with something. I, I got to go into my lab and then come up with something that hopefully that will make you laugh and then you're willing to do it and then we'll shoot this thing. All right, man. I'll be waiting. Okay, awesome, man. Great to speak with you and I'll see you soon, Mark. Okay. Thanks, Gabby. From one all-star to the next, his fan base elected basically the entire starting lineup for the 2015 All-Star Game. And even though he shares a blue-collar work ethic as Giordano, as a goal-scoring forward, his highlights are flashier. Let's move from Calgary to Chicago, and my next guest is on the phone right now. If it's going to be uh, an interview, I'm going to conduct it. So I'll answer my own questions, ask myself the questions, then give y'all the answers. The first time I met this man, I was covering the NHL playoffs in 2009. His Chicago Blackhawks were in the second round battling the Vancouver Canucks. And after every goal he scored, when I was in the arena, I delivered a gift in our post-game interview. A Blackhawks sticker for his helmet. And then in 2010, we took it to the next level because... Patrick Sharp didn't just score goals, he scored huge ones, timely ones, back-breaking and series-commanding goals. More goals, more stickers. And when he won the Stanley Cup in Game 6 in 2010 in Philadelphia, I brought the biggest Chicago Blackhawks sticker I can find from the United Center from the game before, which was the size of a record. And I haven't seen him since. It's been five years, and I've missed him. Patrick Sharp, welcome to the Cabby Presents podcast. Hey, Cabby, welcome. Uh, thank you for the welcoming, and uh, I miss you too, buddy. Dude, it's been five years. Like you're you're uh, you're PR dudes, man. You th those guys operate like it's the friggin' White House. Like even when actually, even when I went to the White House, when you guys were there, I didn't even get to see you. <laughs> well, hey, don't uh, don't blame me. Sometimes you get lost to the PR guys, but. Man. Now we got each other's numbers, and uh, we got to keep this line open all the time. Will do, for sure. So, do you remember what happened every time I did give you one of those stickers? Like, what happened I afterwards? Uh, afterwards, I don't know. I just remember you being in the rink all the time, and whenever you were there, I seemed to score a goal and uh, got a sticker afterwards. That's what I remember. How, uh, how annoyed were the equipment guys? <laughs> uh, I think in that situation... They would let it pass because they knew that I was a little superstitious and I was scoring goals and we were winning games. So if it meant taking off a few stickers, peeling them off the back of my helmet, then uh, they're willing to do that. Dude, it was, I don't know, has anybody, have you had that experience since? I mean, I know you guys won in 2013 and in that playoff run it was, it was pretty awesome too. But did, has, have you had that kind of interaction with anybody before where they were bringing you rewards for your, your work on the ice? Uh, no, that was it. That's the first, last, and, uh, and only time it's happened to me. So, uh, one for one, I don't know if I want to find someone else that can give me a present after I score a goal. <laughs> I think you're the only one that can do it, bro. Thank you, sir. It was, uh, you know, it, in that series, uh, in 2020, it was you and Dave Bolin. And you guys, for some, just had, like, the most, like, the biggest and the most timely goals. Like, every time I was there... You guys just like oh, it was. It was pretty remarkable. I think if I can remember correctly, you ended the Stanley Cup Finals like the last three games. You scored a goal. Do you is that is that? Do you remember that? Hey man, I think I'm the only one that remembers that. This is good for my <laughs> ego. Bringing back all these memories. Um, yeah, I remember. Uh, I remember the whole Stanley Cup run. I remember scoring some big goals. But that's the thing about the the team that usually wins the cup. It's just not always. You know, the Kane and Taves, they do their job, but it's the, the guys that you don't often hear about chipping in, like Dave Boland and you know, Troy Brower scored some goals, I scored some goals. So it's a whole team effort when it comes down to that, that situation. That's for sure. Yeah, you guys were you guys were pretty spectacular. Um, so it's uh, it's the new year, 2015. There's uh, I'm trying to be a new me. I mean, kind of the same me, but like a, like a better version of me. Did you make a New Year's resolution? Uh, I haven't really gotten around to making one of those in a while Usually how long's a while like since high school yeah you know since i don't know it seems like with this nhl schedule that the new year is like september when you go to training camp right, Jan right. january 1st is like you know just part of the grind so haven't made too many changes but uh, i wouldn't change too much if i were you either cabby i well i appreciate that that's that's very kind thank you sir well i mean you know i like it listen you are uh extremely successful in your your line of work 
uh, and you're you're very handsome, and I I'm, I feel comfortable enough saying that to you. Uh, if there was a if there was a Mount Rushmore of current NHL players who are the most handsome in the NHL, I think your face is on this Mount Rushmore. Uh, I think uh, Tyler Sagan's, uh, Henrik Lundqvist, and Joffrey Lupul's. That's the Mount Rushmore of handsome in 2015's NHL. Um, uh, do you agree with this uh, with this list, or should should someone else be up there? <laughs> Thereby removing a, a player. Well, I never once uh, thought I belonged with with that uh, that group of players. Right well, this there. is probably what, the first what, time what you're hearing list. it. Uh, you can't argue with Longquist, right? All the ladies seem to love him and uh, his style. Uh, Loops have seen him on TSN quite a bit. You know, he's again. What am I? How can I argue that? And who's the other one? Sagan. Ty- Tyler Sagan. Yeah, for the for the like, you know, he's an up and comer. Well, man, the guy's actually yeah. been scoring a ton this year. But, no, um, yeah, that's a, that's a tough one for me to agree to, only because he's in he's in Dallas and he plays <laughs> in Chicago a bunch of times a year, and man, he scored lots of goals against us. So oh, really? Kick one guy off. If we can kick one guy off, let's take. Okay, him but off. if we take Sagan off, we got to put him. We got to fill you know fill that slot with somebody else. Yeah. Uh, well, I, that's your job to <laughs> come up with a pretty face, I guess. Yeah, I don't I don't know because I just came up with this list this morning, and I was like, I wonder how he's going to react to it because this is probably uh, like towards the bottom of things you thought that you would have to talk about in this conversation. Who else is handsome in the NHL? Yeah. Uh, that's, that's a good one. That's a good, uh, that's a good icebreaker. A coffee shop, <laughs> water, food, <laughs> That just sort of sets the tone for where this thing's going to go. Um, right. Okay, so as well as trying to enhance my own, my own sexy, uh, I want to enhance my scent. A few, a few months ago, I had Sheldon Surrey on this podcast, and I recalled a story about how he blew me up in an interview because I, I doused myself with cologne. Probably because the, <laughs> probably because the night before I went out and uh, yeah. I got after it a little bit, so I wanted to kind of mask what was you know coming out of my pores, which was uh, gotcha. uh, a gray animal. The gray goose was probably coming out of my pores. But he was like, um, so anyway, he said that he wears Old Spice cologne, and I was like, what? So I uh, so and I was and so I you know I took his I wear the Old Spice uh, deodorant which I think is dope because that that lasts like a good eighteen hours the the one in like the red case that's that's my yep. go to but as far as colognes go Patrick what's the what are the ones that you use because I I think I need a couple of new ones to rotate through my uh, chosen scents yeah I'm uh, I'm not a big cologne guy I'm more like uh, you were in the early days the Old Spice works for me but just the deodorant you know that that seems to be strong enough. Um, I just did an event with, with Zania here in, in Chicago, and Sick. they provided me with a bunch of different colognes. So they're sitting on my uh, my bathroom counter, and, <laughs> and they're ready to go. But I just I need a guy, or someone, to show me how to use them the right way. Well, I, no, obviously you know how to use the cologne, and I'm sure your natural body scent is it just it just creates pheromone explosions from the female <laughs> the, the female fans of your sport and in your town uh but Zania, that's a dope brand i mean obviously it's a it's a it's a luxury brand when it comes to fashion um so but you haven't even cracked one of the bottles yet no i'm still afraid to use it there why is, are you afraid there's a way you can go wrong i mean what if you uh what if you put too much on you're getting in a cab with somebody i don't know there's a lot of things that can go wrong when you're putting cologne on i th- isn't it okay now but the listeners are going to you know, every every dude that listens to this is going to have his own way of putting on cologne. But I thought, I thought it's isn't it one spray on one side, kind of behind your ear, like your neck a little bit, and then one spray on the other side. I don't think it's a direct blast. I think it's kind of you have to hold it maybe six to eight inches away, and then kind of like lean your neck into the, the mist, thus uh, you know protecting you or coating you with a a beautiful uh, either a musk or a a, a fruit smell or something that's kind of powdery i think that's i think that's the method of uh of application for colognes i think it's one spray one side one spray the other and then you're good i think okay well i mean i'm learning on the on the phone right now but i've always uh subscribed to the method less is more less is more ah okay see i well, see i like that see i'm the more is more that's why i'm so freaking <laughs> obnoxious you know this patrick uh okay hey so uh why don't you tweet more often yeah, that's a good question. Uh, I never really got into the whole Twitter thing, and then it just seems like once the season starts, you know, I don't want to 
I don't want to be the guy that says something stupid or gets in trouble for tweeting, so I don't tweet a whole lot during the hockey season, but you, I need help with that for sure. You know you won't tweet anything stupid. You've never even said anything stupid publicly. If you did, we would know about it. Maybe on the bus or the plane you said, like, you had a bad joke, maybe, or said something that guy's like, ah, oh, wah, wah, one of those. But, dude, you never, <laughs> say, you never say anything stupid publicly. Trust yourself. You have good instincts. You're from Thunder okay, Bay, but- Ontario. Oh, yeah, that's but true. But, I mean, there are some stupid people up there. I've been there, but... Um, well, Twitter is just getting to Thunder Bay right about now, I think. <laughs> they just figured out <laughs> For those of you listening that don't know where Thunder Bay, Ontario is, it's like an 18-hour drive north of Toronto. It's like, how close are you to Hudson's Bay? Uh, uh, I think we're pretty far from Hudson's Bay, but we're are up you? there. I mean, matter of fact, the Thunder Bay story, I remember being probably 24, 25 years old, going to a party. Taylor Pyatt, a former NHL player, had a party at his uh, his lake house. <laughs> and you, and of all people, you were at the party. <laughs> Do you remember that? Of course, of course. Dude, it was my only, I was there for, okay, so I was there for my cameraman Brian's wedding. And it right, was, that's what it was, yeah. And it was, and, and like, it, it like we had my my producer my man d and i we had kind of tapped out around nine o'clock and we were like how do we get to this party how and the <laughs> night before we met someone who was telling us about this pig roast you got to come to the pig roast it's the it's the so so he drew a map on a friggin napkin I, like I, I i kid you not so then we fa- somehow convinced someone to give us a ride to the party which was like 40 minutes away from where he was having this wedding so there we yeah. were and there were like two three hundred people at this at Taylor's place. It was beautiful, big pool. The inside of the house got demolished because there was like beer cans and bottles like everywhere. I felt so bad for him, but it was it was awesome. The only thing was they ran out of cups. Do you remember that? You don't yeah, remember that. You don't remember that. The twenty four year old Patrick Sharp doesn't remember that. <laughs> I remember a few things from that night. <laughs> oh, I like. Okay, so um, yeah, Patrick, uh, what what are those things that you remember from that night? Oh, I just remember it was great weather all day long. That's what I remember. And, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I had a good time. Uh, yes. Well, I'm, I'm sure you had a better time than I did because I left at, I don't know, like two something. And uh, Eric Stahl's, uh, Tanya, Eric Stahl's wife, drove Dave and I back to our hotel. And then we hit that 24 hours McDonald's. And I think I spent 28 bucks on McDonald's. That is that is that is just a disgusting amount of food for you know two thirty two forty five a.m. Twenty eight bucks you could feed like a whole hockey team for twenty eight bucks. That's that's a lot. That's a lot of chicken McNuggets for sure. Oh man, <laughs> chicken McNuggets, chicken sandwiches, the double cheeseburgers. When was the last time you had like one of those like glorious but gluttonous nights where you hit a late night drive through and spent you know over. 18, 20 bucks on food. Yeah, it always seems to happen, doesn't it? It's probably, uh, probably at the end of the season, just about every year, you know, get to get together with the year end party and the guys are having fun. It's usually a long day, especially in Chicago. Maybe you do a, a Cubs game in the afternoon, nice. followed by a dinner, followed by a night out. So nice. For some reason, you don't need the calories, you don't need the food, but uh, you and all your buddies are heading to McDonald's at two thirty, three in the morning, to load up. Do you guys go to that that famous McDonald's in Chicago with like the two floors and the the statues out front? That one. If we're uh, if we're downtown, then that's probably the one. Yeah, it's open twenty four hours. The best part about that McDonald's is there's always fights going on at the oh, yes. morning. Oh so yes, yes. Go there with a buddy and protect yourself and uh, keep your head on a swivel. Well, you have to. You, don't you have to stay in the car? You can't go into the McDonald's because you're going to get is harassed. Right? Oh yeah, I mean. At that time, no, in the middle of the night, you don't really care about that kind of stuff. Yeah, I guess, I, I suppose, because your, your mind isn't uh, as uh, sharp, pardon the pun, as it is, at, you know, at, like, say, 8 p.m. Well, if you're going to Rock and Roll McDonald's at 3 in the morning in downtown Chicago, you're probably not, you're probably not just out for a nice meal. <laughs> I like that it's called the Rock and Roll McDonald's. Hey, is, uh, is the Dog and Bear still a decent spot in Chicago, or is it, is it past its prime? The dog and bear? Oh, no. Sorry, the bull and bear. Sorry, the dog and bear is oh. here in Toronto. The bull and bear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bull and bear. Bull and bear is a good spot. Yeah. It's, uh, again, that's right downtown, right in the heart of the city. So if, if you're down there in that area where, where some of the young guys seem to live, that's a good spot to go. I live over by, by Wrigley Field a couple blocks away. So oh, you're in Wrigleyville? Uh, whole different area, yeah. Oh, I'm for sure, like, spending a good four or five days. Like, when you, in the summertime, do you go back to Thunder Bay, or do you have, like, a cabin somewhere? 
Yeah, we got a, a lake place in, in Thunder Bay, and I'm usually there for a couple of weeks in August. We have a golf tournament, a charity golf tournament that we run up there. Other than that, uh, kind of split time between Connecticut, where my wife is from, and uh, here in Chicago because it's tough to get away in, in the summertime. It's pretty fun here. Dude, I'm for sure. Like, w- like when you're in Thunder Bay in August, I, I, I'm. It's like it's gonna be you, me, and Dupree. I'm gonna be Dupree, but you and you and your wifey will be away. Dupree will be on your couch, and Dupree will be hitting that rock and roll McDonald's four out of the five nights that he's staying at your crib in Wrigleyville. I had a great time there. When, yeah, when you guys were in the finals, oh my goodness, that was. Yeah. I mean, you guys were on lockdown, and actually, you know, one night. I saw Bolin in a cop car. I'm walking, and so we're, it's like it's like 145. And I don't know if I should be telling this story. I've already kind of t- said the so. <laughs> well, you got to finish it now, right? Yeah. So so Dave Bolin. So I'm walking. Oh, I don't know what street it is, but it's right in the heart of Wrigleyville. And I'm I'm walking. No, it was earlier. It was probably like 1145. And I'm like, man, this guy's already in the back of a uh, of a cruise. I'm like, who's that guy? So I get close. I'm like. I see bowling. I'm like, dude, what are you doing? So I go over to the cop car. I'm like, guy, what, what are you doing right now? Like, you're in the finals. He's like, man, I just need to get out of the house. I'm like, and this is how you do it? And he goes, well, this, this cop's my buddy, so sometimes we just cruise around. I'm like, that's amazing. And you guys still won. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's, that's bowling for you. He's all his buddies uh, were cops here in Chicago. So whenever you see the lights going and, and you're out in the town, you it's bully for sure. He had this thing he used to hang under his, under his mirror in his car and would allow him to pretty much park anywhere in the city and never get a ticket. So what what like so, what was it like a police ID ba- or some kind of police badge or permit or something? Yeah, it wasn't it didn't have any numbers. It wasn't a badge. It was just like a the universal city symbol that you could like hang <laughs> that that let everybody know you're cool with the cops so wow he was the guy to get there. did he ever get any for anybody else or was he selfish you're like no no this is just for me this is a one of one oh, he, he kept all the benefits to himself we did he? tried to get it for years but he didn't, <laughs> didn't share the wealth that's for sure did he ever pull over any of the teammates in a cop car uh, i've been scared before i've been coming out of places and had light shine on me one time i came out of a place i was with brian campbell and uh we were actually leaving early, and, and we kind of passed. <laughs> I guess Dave was getting there, and we were leaving early, and as we were leaving, the lights shined on us and uh, kind of scared the crap out of us. The parking lot of a downtown Chicago bar. Come and on. The cops bar were, were the, the cops from the Jerry Springer show, the security <laughs> guard. Oh, really? That that Steve, uh, whatever his name is, the big yeah, guy with the bald Steve, head? It was, it, was a, it was a guy named Pete Kelly who you can recognize if you look him up. It was him, another cop. Dave Bowl and Vince Vaughn, of all people, in, in the same cop car. So come on, and they, yeah. <laughs> that's and amazing. They were, they were just out driving around and checking out the city, and they were on their way to that bar as, as Soupy and I were leaving. So it was, uh, that's Dave Bowen for you. That's that's incredible. That's probably the best story that's ever been told on this podcast. <laughs> Um, well, you got, you got to get Bully on here. Then he's got a lot better stories than I do. I do, but I yeah, but he's a tough one to crack. Like you're you're great with me. Like you're great with the media. You've always like in our interviews, and we I probably interviewed you fifteen or twenty times between two thousand nine and two thousand ten, and you never gave me cliches. Even after a game, when you guys just turn into like cliche machines, you never gave me. Right. Well, I, granted, I didn't really ask the same questions as the beat writers, but you never gave me cliches, and you never you always made it interesting. You always had a smile on your face. It was great. But Bolin, uh, and he didn't really give me cliches either, but he's a little tougher. He's a little tougher to crack. So that's that's going to be a little bit more effort that i got to put forward to get the goods. And I'm sure he's got some great ones. Like, anytime you're in a cop car, you just have, like, the authority of the world. And you oh, can yeah. basically do anything. Yeah. Um, yeah. Go ahead. No, I, I, that's enough of Dave Bolin. I can't uh, I'm not going to say anything else about Bolin. <laughs> I don't want to get myself in trouble. You're not going to get yourself in trouble. Okay, you said so you said you live in in Wrigleyville. Now when uh and uh when you drive with the family, uh does dad get control of the of the stereo or is the dad then relinquish control to mom who's in uh or your wifey who's in um you know, riding shotgun and thus right. you have to listen to and I'm making a huge assumption here like Taylor Swift or Lana Del Rey or Miranda Lambert or Nicki Minaj? Is that what happens mm-hmm. when you guys are driving or going on, you know, maybe 10 or 15 or 20 minute, you know, car rides? Yeah, that's exactly what happens. If it's, <laughs> if it's my wife, if it's my wife and me, then we're listening to like, a, I don't know, a talk radio, maybe a Howard Stern. maybe. Oh, a, nice, nice. 
maybe put in the co- the cabbie podcast. Yeah, like you tell him. You tell him, P Sharp. But if we're if we're riding in the full family, which means myself, my wife, and my two daughters, I have a three year old and a one year old. Then uh, then mom's in charge because. I get a kick out of watching the three-year-old sing these Taylor Swift songs and all these songs that are on the, the top 40 now. So we, we put that on, and the three-year-old sings away to us in the back seat. So your, your three-year-old is singing Shake It Off? That's the, that's the song she likes, and she likes that <laughs> Frozen song, too, of all songs. So we, we hear that all day long. For, oh, from the movie Frozen? Yeah. You know what's funny? Uh, James Duffy said the same thing. He said when he's driving with his... I was like, what do you, you know, we were talking about music. I'm like, what are you listening to now? He goes, I just listened to that song Frozen. That song from the movie Frozen over and over. It's funny that you guys, as dads, have that shared experience. The next time you see him bring that up, like, oh, I heard uh, you got a, you're a fan of that song from Frozen. He'd be like, how do you know that? Or blah, blah, blah. But yes, (laughs) as dads. So, uh, okay. So it's Taylor, Taylor Swift is what, uh, is what um, you have, you're forced to listen to. Are you still... Are you like a classic, if, if it's just you in the car and you're going to the rink or you're going to the airport because you guys are on your way to, uh, uh, you know, going on the road, what does, what do you listen to then? Uh, I'm more old school. I'm not, I'm, I don't mind the music that gets played in the locker rooms these days, but. Which is what? I might, you know, like the dance music and the club music and the EDM stuff. That's, that's what we play anyway, a lot of the time. Okay. Uh, I'm more into like the, the rock and roll. You know, I like Pearl Jam. I like Foo Fighters, bands like that that actually uh, play some music together. Hey, did you watch uh, Dave Grohl's show? Um, his HBO show. Yeah, I think he had like eight or ten episodes where they were creating uh, his new album. What the? Uh, uh, so- not Sonic City. Oh, yeah, was Sonic it? Highways. So- Sonic Highways. Yeah, yeah. Have you been watching that? Yeah, it was pretty cool. He goes to each city and kind of spends a week there and interviews people and they. they build a song i guess in that one week and and then move on to the next one i thought it was pretty cool to watch me too and i'm I'm not a rock and roll guy so i was learning so much about about that genre of music and i I found it pretty fascinating because he does a great job and makes it uh relatable or actually the the producers or whoever you know cuts those those um one hour docs they make it relatable enough so that idiots like me that just listen to hip-hop and r&b can understand and, and can track try to trace the journey of the rock and roll roots in a nashville or 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 um uh new orleans or uh seattle and then it can make it relatable so that's, that's pretty cool i i do enjoy that have you met dave Grohl or eddie vetter because you have a certain level of fame because of your excellence in the game of hockey i've not met dave Grohl, but I have met uh, Eddie Vedder, which is very lucky to to do. He's uh, he's from Chicago, so he spends a lot of time here. Um, Eddie Vedder's from city. Chicago. Yeah, he was born in Evanston, which is just north of the city. So, huh? I always he's, thought he was just a Seattle guy. Here, and he, he's uh, really good friends with Chris Chelios, also, who's who's from Chicago. So, I've kind of bumped into those guys a few times over the years. Now, did Eddie give you like? Did he do the low thing like? Uh... How you doing? Dude? Like he does, he, like when sometimes when he's, as you know, because you've been to a pro jam concert, doesn't he sometimes just like break set and then you'll talk to the audience? But it's like really, it's on that really. Like I wouldn't say that he's stoned, but or because he, he drinks wine, but it's like really low and like it's he'll just go on sort of a riff about some social policy or so, something. Does he? Doesn't he do that? Like, I heard he's kind yeah, of famous I, for that. It, it, he's pretty, uh, he's pretty much like that in person. Uh, nothing with the politics or the. The fundraising stuff but he's um you know he's very mellow very wise laid back and uh pretty cool to hear from one time i actually scored a, a hat trick on my birthday sick and, december uh, 27 shout out right thank you so after you after every game you have, especially after all the good games you check your phone and you see who's uh texting you or who was watching and that was the last time i heard from him as i got a text from eddie vetter after that game so that was probably one of the highlights of the season last year, for that's, sure. That's really sick, actually. That's that's yeah. really sick. Um, okay, I got two more questions for you, because you brought up Chris Chelios, who's an absolute G. Again, when I was talking to um, Sheldon Surrey a few months back, Surrey, I've been to his place in... Um, in uh, in Malibu, and he lives across the street from Chris Chelios. But Chelios, uh-huh. he does not like me. So I, I was like, yeah, we're not... I don't want to pass by because he's going to probably want to fight me or be like, what are you doing in my house? But he told me like Chelios's place in LA, he has legendary parties. I think Surrey met Tom Cruise once at Chris Chelios's house. I'm like, Tom Cruise is like Tom Cruise and Will Smith are like the two <laughs> biggest stars in the world. And this dude at Chris Chelios. So, so my question to you is how did he become such a G? 
Like, you must have heard stories about how that dude is just such a gangster, but do you know how he became such a G, being like an all-world defenseman and playing in Chicago in the 90s? I know, man, and he knows everybody. Maybe it's because he's living in the right area. If you've ever hung out with Charlie, like, you you can't not have a good time, so that's probably got a lot to do with it, and, you know, I don't know. He, I hung out with him and, and Chris Rock before, who's... Uh, or Kid Rock, sorry, Chris Rock. <laughs> that Chris Rock, that'd be uh, an interesting. Co- that's an interesting combo. Yeah. Chris Jellis and Chris Rock. <laughs> yeah. No, Kid Rock from the Detroit uh, era there, and I don't know, man. Chelios is, uh, is a fun guy to be around. Okay, last question. I've I've asked this uh, uh, earlier with um, uh, Mark Giordano, and I want to know because you play this uh, great sport. Um, I imagine that you also recognize. Uh, you know, greatness and excellence in other sports. And sports fans, we we separate ourselves into factions. You know, obviously there are regional factions. You know, I'm a, you know people like the Chicago teams and people like the Pittsburgh teams and uh, you know the LA teams, etc. But I want to know which faction you belong to based on these six uh, pairings. So you just tell me which guy you are. Okay. Okay. Are you a Manning guy or a Brady guy? Brady. Are you a LeBron guy or a Kobe guy? Uh, LeBron. Are you a Mike Trout guy or a Yasiel Puig guy? I like Trout. Are you a Crosby guy or an Ovechkin guy? That one there. Uh, Got to be Crosby. Got to stick with the Canadian. <laughs> Are you a Lionel Messi guy or a Cristiano Ronaldo guy? Uh... Either one. I'll take Messi, I guess. I like Messi better. Are you a Federer guy or a Nadal guy? Federer. And finally, this is a bonus, are you a Pacquiao guy or a Mayweather guy? <laughs> I get a kick out of Mayweather, so I got to go with Floyd on that one. Really? Wow, it's not where I thought you'd, you'd go there. A Mayweather guy. See, because you're a hockey player and in your culture, you guys suppress your personalities so much. Like, the right. game is the star, not the star. Like, the athletes aren't the star. Whereas uh-huh. in, in basketball, and, and it's it's heightened in boxing, obviously, because it's an individual sport, the athletes are the star, and then the sport is, like, the co-star. So it's, right. a, it's surprising that Mayweather is your dude. I guess it... it are you a fan because of those like HBO twenty four sevens? You just see his lavish, ridiculous lifestyle, and you're like, "This is out of control," but it's very entertaining. It's just so far fetched from what my everyday life is like that I get a kick out of watching everything he does. So that's why I said Floyd Mayweather. Why was the Crosby Ovechkin one so tough? Oh, uh, just because they're both great players, and uh, after playing with Sid at the Olympics, he's a. I got to take him for sure. He's a great guy off the ice. Obviously, you know what he does on the ice, but. When it comes to hockey, there's so many good hockey players that don't want to really, I don't know. What's wrong with Ovechkin? He's a good player. Right? <laughs> well, I don't know. You didn't pick Ovechkin. I don't know what's wrong with Ovechkin. I feel like everybody <laughs> picks Crosby. When I asked that question, like I, Jordano said Crosby also, and I've had that this conversation before uh, about, uh, like, and I just threw that sort of hypothetical out there, and usually people say Crosby over Ovechkin. But the other one, I guess I could have replaced, maybe I would to make it harder, I should have said Crosby, a Crosby guy or a Datsuk guy. Oh, yeah, there you go. Either one. I mean, I'm, I don't, when I say good things about one guy, it makes it sound like I'm criticizing the other guy, so. That's, no, and well, you're, you're certainly not criticizing the other guy. Yeah, I'll, I'll take all three, but I like Crosby the best out of those three. The only way I'm going to criticize you as I close this, uh, this interview is you don't tweet enough and you don't put enough on Instagram. On Twitter, for you guys, it's uh, at 10P Sharp. And then on Instagram, it's, it's 10PJ Sharp. Just put a few more things, dude. Like, you don't even have to... Like, the injury pick was awesome. That got a lot of, a lot of, uh, of traction. Just put, like, a few more pictures. It could be a winning hand on the, on the team plane. Uh, you know, it could be... Um, it could be, you know, you're listening to Pearl Jam on your iPod or your iPhone. You just take a screen capture of that and just be like, hey, this is my heading to the rink. People be like, oh, yeah, I'm a big Pearl Jam fan, too. Or they're like, oh, that song's awesome. That's all you need to do. Just a couple more. Just sprinkle us with your life a little bit more, Patrick. All right. I'll take that advice. I'll, uh, I'll get it tweeting a little bit more. Maybe I'll send a tweet over to you. Yeah. I will, I will tweet you uh, when, when we put this on uh, iTunes and then... Uh, and I'll be like, hey, I finally caught up with my dude. 
Good luck the rest of the way. And hopefully by the end of the season, you won't have the entire Taylor Swift 1989 album memorized word for word. It'll, it'll be upstairs. And uh, thanks, thanks again for the Mount Rushmore honor. That means a lot. <laughs> <laughs> My pleasure, bro. Thank you for listening to Cabbie Presents, the podcast. 